Evelyn, um, thank you for having us. You're welcome. It's lovely to have you. Tell me then, you went to NCAD in Dublin. And what did you study? What did you study there? Um, I studied art education uh -huh. and I specialised in painting. Uh -huh. So um, it was sort of a compromised decision because, you know... So that was with a view to teaching? Yeah, that was okay. a compromise. Okay. <laughs> you can go uh, to art college. But, but it has to be practical. Well, <laughs> you have to be able to get a job. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. also, I did really want to go to NCAD, so I... Yeah. I got uh, it would fine be the art. premier art college in my art. head. It was yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. you know, when I got education there, I took it. You okay. know, yeah. So, so you did your uh, qualification in NCAD, and then when you left, at some point, I know fairly soon after, you pretty much stopped painting, didn't you? <laughs> yes, I <laughs> kind of did. <laughs> why? How did that happen, or why do you think that that happened? Um, I suppose. I was thinking about it. I think I went into college with sort of too high an expectation of, you know, I had of what I had in mind for it. It didn't turn out to be what I had in mind, you know. Um, the course, you mean? The, yeah, I mean, I suppose I always, I, you know, I identified myself as a, as a good drawer and a good painter. And when I went in there, it's kind of, that wasn't really what it was about, you know. Yeah. And... Um, I just I got lost. I just I, I just found the course very difficult. Um, I I suppose we were always trying to please the tutors, and mm -hmm. I didn't really know what they were looking for, so I didn't know how to. To please. Them. Yeah, I just yeah. I found it a very um, not a supportive environment really at all for me. So. so did you go in with a sense of? some identity as an artist I mean maybe you didn't call yourself an artist at that stage but you had something yeah yeah and did you feel when you left that I had you, lost that you had lost yeah it? yeah yeah because I suppose I was always the one who was good at drawing and you know yeah. you know then you you join a bigger it's awful isn't it yeah I know <laughs> so <laughs> it's I think it's very common I think it's very happens. common I think yeah if for maybe for different different reasons sometimes too but yeah. very common I think not for everybody but very not for common everybody, yeah experience. but for a lot of people I know that's we came out neither wanting to teach art or make art yeah um I know very few people even so what did you do then I worked in a shop <laughs> as you do <laughs> and then I um I did teach for a little while I kind of I had two different um, positions in Dublin and I ended up actually getting a permanent teaching job okay Teaching, teaching art, oh, yeah. Art. Okay. But I just it wasn't for me. I felt right. totally out of my depth, and I think I was far too young to be standing in front of other young people. You know, mm -hmm. I just felt like one of them. I didn't feel mature mm -hmm. enough to do it at all, um, and it I found it very stressful and I, all those aspects of that you need to be a teacher, like a disciplinarian and organized and timekeeper and. You that wasn't me. It wasn't you, certainly no. not at that time. Anyway. No, yeah. no. Yeah. So um, I scooted off and yeah. <laughs> went travelling and basically left my permanent job, which, okay. you know, is and not all something time I took you lightly. you were making your own art, really? No, no. no I, I, and how long a time from the time that you left college, do you think, how long did that last where you weren't really making any art of your own? I mean, really, you're talking 10, 12 years. I tried a few times over that period of time. I, mm. I would go in and out of it. Mm. But I never found my my style or my... Your mojo. Yeah, my mojo, mm. my thing. You know, I just was, I was lost. I just, you know, I was trying this, that and the other and just didn't, f none of it felt authentic to me, you know. Yeah. So, so what changed? So I decided then it wasn't for me, you know. Because I mean, I'm sitting here in your house <laughs> and it's full of beautiful art. So, and I mean, I know from your, you know, I know from you, but I know from your website and you know you're selling art. I know it's, it's maturing, beautiful work. So what changed in 10, 12 years of doing making, not making yeah. art? What happened? A load of little things happened. Yeah. Um, I had my son. Yeah, and I was I ended up ironically teaching in the primary school, so that's what my that's my job. Yeah, and I suppose I just um, I I found having my son difficult. I found raising a baby very difficult and mm. stressful, and balancing that with my job, I start. I think I just I got very down. 
So you had Finn. Yeah. Um, who's now about four? No, he's going to be six in a couple of weeks. Sorry. Yeah. (laughs) Sorry, Finn. He'll kill me for that. So Finn is six now. So, so what changed for you? Yeah, I um, I suppose I I kind of came to a crossroads with my my career, and I I started to lose the love that I had for teaching. And I started to find it very stressful. And then the balance act, balancing act of teaching and then have teaching young kids and having mm-hmm. a young child at home. I just, um, I just needed a break from it. Mm-hmm. So I think it, it's, it's very common, I think, for women. Yeah. And of course, postnatal depression and all of that yeah. is a huge reality for a lot of women. But yeah. even not that far into it, you know, everything changes when you have a child. Everything changes, and yeah. You know, you are now a mother, yeah. which is a huge life change for us as women. Yeah, and also it can change the way we are creatively as well. So you, you were, you know, you had a relationship with your husband. You are now a young mother. You were working full time, part time, full time, yeah, at the time, yeah, and and you know, getting to grips with this little person and, yeah. and how to be a mother. So. Before you had Finn, though, you weren't painting. Yeah. And when once you had Finn and you went through that time where it was hard for you and you were you were quite low. Yeah. So within that, where did the art come? You know, how did that fit in? Why was it then that you started painting? I suppose I just, I had to. Yeah. Um, I have a really good friend who helped me kind of see that I wasn't doing anything for myself, you know. Yeah. So I was, it was work and there was home. But I had lost myself a little bit, so mm. um, it, it was, she kind of helped me to see, like, what are you doing that's just for Evie, you know? Mm. So it was, part of that was sort of um, looking at art again and, and realising that it was something I had done all my life, you know? And then I had just dropped it. So, you know, it was the realisation that I actually needed it. You know, I needed to be doing that. And without it, I, I was going a bit stir crazy, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so it's interesting what you said about when you were in college it was all about pleasing your tutors. Yeah. And then you kind of rejected that nearly, didn't you? You stopped doing that. And when you had Finn, you got to a place where you felt you needed it again, Evie needed it. Yes, exactly. So you weren't pleasing your tutors or, or somebody else, you were just doing it for you. Yeah. Yeah. And it and I, I, I entered back into it, you know, with the understanding that I was the, going to drop the perfectionist and you know I, like the first course I actually I did I started doing a little e-course and mm. the first one I did was called permission to play mm. and that's why I picked it yeah. <laughs> I didn't know anything about the the artist yeah. I'd never you know but I just loved the name permission yeah. to play yeah. because that's what I wanted I, yeah. I wanted just a time out and no expectations and you know I didn't really care about the outcome. Yeah. I was just doing it for therapy, you know, basically, like mindfulness or whatever you want yeah. to call it, you know. Yeah. And I think the, the, the big thing that changed it was when I created a space to work for myself. Yeah. So I, you know, I had the spare room for the visitors that never came, came twice a year. <laughs> yeah. 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 So when I reclaimed that space kind of and set it up as my and you had to studio. Give you permission to have your studio. Permission. Yeah. That's everything. It was yeah. giving me per- giving myself the permission to take the time and to create a space and to, you know, sort of be frivolous, like, you know, yeah. like allow myself this time for me, you know, that mm wasn't necessarily being it's productive so <laughs> we, you know we do that in the course in the, the studio setup challenge and it, it's it's you're reclaiming a space for yourself that's yeah. physical as well as you know yeah and i think that's and, really important practical you know that that you're physically reclaiming a yeah. space for you to to do this thing yeah and even though that's such a simple thing that was like yeah. a really big deal it was like oh can i take over the spare room and you know what if i wreck it and i'll damage it who would say thing. no <laughs> you know uh, you know you know, it was I me know, holding myself Yeah, because I yeah. know Eamon is really supportive yeah, yeah. and you have the room. Totally. You know, so. yeah. And of course, for some people, it's only a little corner. You know, yeah, whatever, maybe, but just yeah. a space. you know, Because yeah. I had a space before Finn was born, but then that became his room. So, yeah. you know, that was symbolic as well. It was like creating a space again for me, yeah. you know. For another um, baby. Yeah. <laughs> another creative yeah. baby. Yeah. So, um, 
So you began a new journey with no expectation. Yeah. So this wasn't about, you know, starting a side hustle of a career no, or, you know, painting <laughs> to get some work in a gallery or show people. This no. was just for every, this was a creative yeah. thing. Not to be seen you. by anyone. Yeah, just, <laughs> yeah. Um, but hey, here you are. <laughs> you are really blossoming. So your work has, has moved along from, yeah. from, what's it now, six years ago? That w was three years ago. Three years ago. Yeah, three years ago. Wow. Yeah. So you've really come on. Yeah. And you've been, you've done some courses, you've had some people who've really helped you. I know Valerie's been really yeah. fantastic in, in helping you along that journey. Yeah. And you've developed a website, you know, you've got some promotion, you got onto Facebook. You uh, have started now selling your work more consistently and doing art fairs. So mm -hmm. how has that all, that progression from just painting for Evie, uh, nearly part of your therapy, Yeah. how did that progression happen for you to kind of what you're doing now? Yeah, well, really unexpectedly. It's all been a completely unexpected, you know, journey. Yeah. Um, like what happened was from doing those various online courses, mm -hmm. they all have Facebook groups. So, you know, initially I just shared my work within the privacy of the groups. Mm -hmm. And then I eventually, you know, from positive feedback, I got the confidence to set up a, first of all, an Instagram page and then a Facebook page. And it literally just started slowly, you know, mm -hmm. like that, just sharing my work and responding to feedback. And I got my first sale then through Facebook mm -hmm. um, in, I think it was February 2016. Mm -hmm. And I just, that was, I just couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that someone would give me money to <laughs> my painting. <laughs> Surreal, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and it, that, it just, you know, it did, there was no one thing that happened on that journey. It was just yeah. literally taking it step by step by step slowly, you know. Small steps. Small steps, yeah. yeah. Needless to say, doing your course was... The that was the business push. course that you yeah. did. Yeah. yeah, I did your weekend business course. Yeah. Um, last person in the door, I think. <laughs> <laughs> last minute decision. It was my husband that was like, do it, do yeah. it. And th I just came away from that realising, oh, you know, I can actually sell my work. You know, I can yeah. actually give this a go. Why not? You know. Yeah. I remember when you arrived, actually, and you sat down in the back yeah. and you were very quiet. Yeah. And I didn't really get to talk to you. And there was a big room full of people. Yeah, it was down totally back, intimidating. And you were there with your notepad and you were like really concentrating. I could see you, you know. <laughs> and I remember on the last day, it was just like a light went on with you. And yeah. when you were leaving, I mean, you gave me a big hug and you just had this look of, yeah, I'm going to do this. <laughs> I'm going to do this, yeah. you know. Yeah. And you have. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and it's... It really did. It I just think you're very, my eyes. you're very focused. But I love that it's one step at a time. I mean, you're still working, yeah. you still have a young family, you've got all the busyness of those things. Yeah. And I loved what you were just saying before we started about um, Art Source Affair that you just did. Yeah. You came home, you did the important things that you knew you had to do for follow-up, and then you shut the door in the room, yeah, and it's totally. still up there, and you're saying now you're ready to go sort it out. And that's really, really great that you are one step at a time. Yeah, I have to, I have to, like, because I, t I have a tendency to be a workaholic. Yeah. And total perfection. I so know what that's like. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, I have to be really careful that I haven't just swapped one form of yeah. workaholism for another. Because I used to be like that with my job. I was obsessed with it, and you know that was everything. Mm -hmm. So I'm very aware this time that I don't want to kill the love I have. You know that yeah. I have at the moment by just keep that painting for every. Uh, yeah, the exactly. Base of everything. Yeah, yeah and and I'm not. I did. I'm not doing it for any. My, you know reason I'm I, yeah. at the end of the day I am doing it for myself you know yeah. so I don't want to lose that I want to keep the balance you know and also have time for fame and have time to have fun you yeah. know and not feel keep healthy you know. keep that you yeah know, and balance is it's one of those things that, you know women are bashed over the head with now yeah. everything you have to balance which sometimes can be interpreted as you actually have to be perfect at everything at <laughs> yeah. the same time but I kind of look at it from the point of view that it's okay to put your attention on one thing at a time and the other time. things yeah. can take a back seat. Yeah. You know, because we can't be perfect at everything exactly. all the time. You know, yeah. this thing that you have to be slim and good looking and your house has to be gorgeous <laughs> and you have to have a creative outlet and your job has to be amazing and your kids have to be perfect. And yeah. You just can't do No, everything, and it's, you know? that was part of me taking a break and, you know, 
recognizing that I, you know you can't you can't mm-hmm. do all that you can't juggle it all and and if I was going to pursue other things I you know that's what I started um, job sharing Mm. so that it has just given me a realistic you know a small but realistic amount of time Mm. you know to pursue art because you can't do it all you know Mm. so the job sharing allows that you've you've got now a website yeah you have a social media presence on facebook and instagram mainly yeah i love instagram yeah Yeah, Yeah. instagram (laughs) suits you and um you started doing art fairs yeah and you're getting commissions and selling work both originals and prints yeah. Um, from your website? Yeah, no, I can sell prints through my website, but okay. um, at the moment not the paintings, but I'm working towards that. So. Okay. Yeah. Great. So with all of the different things that you've got going on there, I want to ask you about the big thing, which is, you know, how do you fit it all in? How do you find the time? You know, I mean, we've kind of talked a little bit about that, but, yeah. you know, with having a young family and um, working part time now. Yeah. Do you find it difficult to still to be disciplined about spending time with one thing or the other thing, or is there a struggle with that, or how how does it work? Yeah, I find it really difficult. Yeah. <laughs> um, like before I started job sharing, I was painting mainly at night time. Yeah. So I'm a total night owl. So that suits me. I can paint at night. Yeah. But I, going to bed at two or three in the morning and then being woken up at half six. <laughs> Seven o'clock. You see, I'm naturally a night owl as yeah. well, but kids completely knocked it out of me. Yeah, well, I was doing <laughs> that, and I for a long time, and I I was I realized I had to stop yeah. because I was just like exhausted yeah. from it. Even though I I was loving it, yeah. but so the job sharing now gives me like two and sometimes three days a week, um, because I alternate so that I can paint. Now I don't get to paint for all of that time because. I'm doing all the other aspects as yeah, well. There's yeah. the social media and, you know, organizing framing and the prints and everything yeah. that goes with it. So, but I try, I try to keep that time for painting if I can, you know, yeah. and in the that's beginning, that's the quiet time in the house. That's, yeah. the, that's the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I did find that really difficult in the beginning because, uh, like when I started, when I told people that I was job sharing, like the, the assumption from everyone was, you know that's to spend more time with Finn yeah so it was it was difficult I had to come around to that you know that I had to overcome that feeling like of am I being selfish is this you know frivolous yeah. like what I'm taking time you know that that whole notion of must be productive and so it's this idea that you know she has her her son in crash and yeah. she's at home paint a hobby yeah doing her hobbies you know, and painting the nails. Yeah. Um, rather than, so how did you overcome that? I mean, that, did you say to difficult. people, actually, I'm working part-time as an artist and part-time teaching now? Or did you find ways to try and... Yeah. Or just, did you go, oh, no, I'm an <laughs> awful person? I, I did a bit of that, yeah. Like, it was a lot of cringing and going, well, actually, no, I'm going to paint. I even had someone say, oh, paint paint the house, like, paint, paint, paint the rooms. Yeah. No, paint, you know. Yeah. I found that people didn't really know what to say to me after I said that. They were like, oh, okay, right. <laughs> Let's move on to another time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there, that, that took a while, you know, to get used to that. And I had to ring fence that time because yeah. it was like, oh, you're free. You know, you can go for coffee or, oh, you know, you can bring me to Dublin or whatever, you know. Yeah. So I had to, you know, that, that was a period of adjustment, to, you know, I from for me too. and for other yeah, people. that I started working full time is it at, you know they have a lot of that and I just start to say I'm actually working that yeah, day I'm working. and they kind of look funny at me yeah. as if you're not what are you, you doing <laughs> <laughs> what did you say I'm working that day yeah so that but, I, but uh, I'm over that now like and I right. have it's very much a, so it's a like routine. a muscle it gets easier yeah. with time and also you're kind of retraining your family and friends a little totally. bit totally yeah totally they yeah. get the hang of it after a while yeah and of course, eventually now, you know, you've got the, you know, the goods to show. Yeah, for exactly. It, you know? Yeah, because in the beginning you're like, you know, I didn't know what I was doing, you know. Yeah. So, but I think if you don't give it that time. Yeah. Like, I'm glad now, you know, that I, I had like, you know, I had the first year of job sharing, you know, just to experiment and, mm. you know, completely just explore without any pressure because... I really did have to find my own way. Like I really didn't know what I what kind of painting I wanted to do or what subject matter or anything. So, mm. you know, I if you don't give yourself that time, it it's never going time. to come out. Yeah. You know, it so, does take time, and yeah. it's a like little frightened thing. You know, it gets frightened away if you put too much pressure on it. Doesn't totally. It? Yeah. So here's my final question. Really, is for 
I'm thinking of the people who are doing our course that are, um, you know, painting away and, and making roads um, and maybe have an eye to actually painting to sell, have sell some of their art or, or you know, move mm. on from, from whatever they're doing to either a part-time career as an artist or even maybe full-time eventually. Yeah. Have you any advice or what would you say to them that from your experience of this, were the important things or things that they might find helpful? Um, well, share, 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 share your work. Yeah. You know, whatever stage you're at, um, you're always going to be, you know, looking back at your older work and think it was rubbish. And, yeah. you know, your eye is always somewhere else. So, But you have to just accept where you, where you are, are at and share it because you'll be amazed yeah. that you know the feedback you get I couldn't believe that I was getting such positive feedback I, you know I was absolutely amazed mm. and it just builds your confidence every mm. single day mm. so that's what I would say just share, share it. yeah get get online and just share it even if it's in private groups if you know whatever stage you're, you're right. ready yeah. for so if it's just a private group or you know cuz I I did find like the Facebook page very difficult that I found that the most difficult because it's so public yeah but so you know share at whatever stage you're at and yeah. um just you know do it keep working mm -hmm. like keep you know show up every day and just keep plowing through it and even when you don't like what you do you know just keep keep working um sometimes I find that it's when I think it's absolutely going nowhere Mm. that it turns into you know it's the it's the paintings I least expect that end up being the ones I love in the mm. end so whereas before years ago I would have just given up you know I wouldn't mm. have I would have decided I didn't like it and I would have just given up but now I I have a lot of work on the go at one time and I just keep going keep going and you know allow time yeah one, once you throw the critic out and put you know you, you give it a chance to turn mm. into something you know so well, thank you so yeah. much. It's been absolutely lovely talking to you. Thanks and I so wish you much. all the best. I'm just so glad to be able to be seeing how well you're doing. And Well, you know. it's thanks to people like you encouraging us. It's you know, been my pleasure. Thank you. Thanks very much, Russia. <laughs>